everyone. Today we're going to be talking about healthy habits for healthcare workers. And I love to start with this quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits and your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. And that is going to be the basis for what we talk about today, how we start to cultivate healthy habit change to support the good work that we do as nurses. So my name is Abby Horton, and it's a privilege to be with you all today. And I will be talking more about my background here. I am a registered nurse and a certified health and life coach. I teach at the University of Alabama's Capstone College of Nursing, and I also am a Wellbeama ambassador for the Honors College and a wellness class educator for the University of Alabama's Wellbeama program. My email is here if you'd like to reach out. If you have questions or just want extra resources or things of that nature, please feel free. So another quote by Aristotle says that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So some recommended reading that if you find this information helpful to you, you might want to explore is James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, which he largely based on his reading and understanding of habit change and the power of habit by Charles Duhigg, which inspired James Clear's journey with learning and exploring habit change and how to really benefit from making small incremental changes. So the power of habit, people really know that about 40 to 45% of your daily actions or habits are unconscious decisions. And so it's important that when we intuitively realize that habits are foundational to everything that we do, that we work to support healthy habit change. So not only do we need to be conscious of the healthy habits that we want to create, we also need to be aware of the habits that we may not find as helpful or as life-giving or may not be serving you right now in this season of life. Maybe you need to change those habits as well. So habit change is really the foundation of health and wellness. It's the foundation of everything that we do. Habit change is necessary to achieve goals and to meet our milestones. Habit change is also based on discipline and not motivation. Motivation is going to wax and wane. There are going to be so many factors that play a role in whether we feel motivated or not, how much sleep we've gotten, how much uh, you know, rest we've gotten, you know, if we're feeding our bodies and fueling our bodies well, many other factors external or internal to us that can impact whether we want to show up well for ourselves. So motivation is going to come and go, but discipline is going to be something that sustains us. And so discipline or the habit of showing up well for ourselves is going to be the thing that we really focus and concentrate on. So in the power of habit, there is a feedback or habit loop that often gets talked about as a cue plus a routine plus a reward equals a habit. And so the habit loop is really set off by this cue. And that's the trigger that tells the brain to go into this automatic mode or autopilot as we often refer to it. And then there's the routine, which can be physical, mental, or emotional. And it's usually a behavior that is followed by a reward that really cements this loop as a habit. So in this picture here, you can see that at the center of the cue, routine, and reward is a craving. And that might be your craving for stress relief. That might be a craving for, you know, food. It could be a craving for connection. There's so many different cravings that we can have as humans, but at the center of everything, uh, in terms of habit loops, it's really addressing what the craving is and what reward you're getting from that craving being met. And so we're going to talk about some healthy habits that we can start. So common habit loops could be something like it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon and your blood sugar starts to drop, your energy starts to, you know, get pretty low. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed because it's nearing the end of the day. And we often will go to the vending machine or we'll go and get a snack or a treat. And that routine is that we go and reach for that donut, that carb or that coffee. 
And the reward is that our blood sugar does go up. Our caffeine is, you know, going up where our needs are getting met in that way. And we get a little bit of a mental break. And so we get stuck in this habit loop of our blood sugar drops. We go get the coffee and the donut, um, high sh- sugar, high carbs. And then the reward is that we feel better because we've gone and taken the break and we get that caffeine and that sugar on board. It could be that your energy gets low, you go and get a coffee and then your caffeine intake goes up and you feel better. It's the same sort of thing. And you could plug any example in there for this. And so that's important today because when we are taking in those extra carbs and sugar, we're really meeting some, you know, basic neurotransmitter, you know, needs, the dopamine and all of the other things that get released or that we start to calm down, like in our cortisol reactions, because we've gotten that need met through food or fuel or, um, through taking a break. So a healthier loop could be that if we start to feel low energy or overwhelmed, that we go and we stretch, or we go and chat with a coworker, or we go and uh, get something to drink. Or, uh, you know, if you're at home, it's the weekend, maybe you go take the dog for a walk. So there's lots of things that you could do in replace of that, habit that isn't serving you as well. And you're still getting the break and you're still maybe getting some extra energy because you are getting maybe water or you're getting that connection through chatting with someone or you're getting outside. And so that is a healthier habit loop that you can actually start to replace the unhealthy routine. So habit stacking then is saying that you have a keystone or foundational habit like brushing our teeth. This is going to be a habit that you have done for a really long time and you do it without thinking. And brushing your teeth is usually a good example of this. And so if you want to start to make changes with your habits, it's really important that you stack your habits with one another. Um, Stack a habit that you want to create with a habit that's already established. And so if you want to start taking some supplements in the morning, then you can say after brushing my teeth, I will take my supplements. So you say after my current habit, I will, and that's the new habit. So this could be many other things. Maybe you exercise in the morning, or maybe you uh, drink coffee in the morning. Maybe it's that after coffee, I will fill my water bottle. So those are lots of examples that you can probably plug in here that you uh, could start to look at. How can I habit stack so that I'm setting myself up for success? So more habit stack examples would be after I turn on the shower, I'm going to do 10 squats. When I wake up, I'm going to make a gratitude list. When I get in my car before I'm you know, back out of the driveway, I'm going to meditate for a couple of minutes. When I drink my coffee, I'm going to get water. When I go into work, I'm going to take the stairs and not the elevator. When I sit down for lunch or dinner, I'm going to take three deep cleansing breaths. So these are some great habit stack examples that you can start to incorporate in your life. And it's important to remember that the little habits, those micro or atomic habits that we create are really going to make a huge difference, much more so than we often think, because we often will say, oh, I need to make a big change, but really big changes come with these small incremental habits changes. So James Clear says at all big things come from small beginnings. And that's just what I was saying. You know, we often think that if we don't make big changes, if we don't try to make drastic habit changes, that we're not going to see results, but we have to think about doing things that are sustainable over the long haul. So I follow a social media influencer, Katie Moore wellness on Instagram. And she often says, if you can't do it or won't do it for three years, don't do it for three minutes. And it's just that notion of if it's not sustainable, then don't try to do it because overall, you're probably going to be setting yourself up to not be successful because it needs to be something that you're passionate about that you can be disciplined at and that you can do over a period of time. So James Clear also talks about the power of tiny gains or getting exponentially better. If you ever hear someone talk about being 1% better every day, it comes from his work because we know that exponentially over a year, if we're 1% better than we were yesterday, not better than our neighbor, not better than our coworker, but 1% better than we were yesterday, then we're going to see that change be really exponential over that year. And we can see where we make a lot of strides in the things that we're wanting to accomplish. 
So it's important to really identify your triggers or your cues. So it might be getting into the car to leave work. Maybe you are feeling tired and you swing through a drive through to get a snack or a Coke or a coffee. That's a really common one. Then you might want to think about, you know, bringing something with you that's healthier so that you have that drink on the way home or that snack on the way home, but that you're not spending the money and the calories in the drive through you also might want to think about tracking your habits for a few days, maybe even a week to see where you can notice patterns and where you want to make changes. You also want to note things like where does the habitual behavior happen? What time of day is it? How do you feel when it happens? Are other people involved? And then how do you feel, you know, what happens right before or right after something else? Uh, and how you feel about all of this and how you kind of, you know, change your mindset around this is really important. So recognizing those patterns and those opportunities to make changes is important. So seven steps to cultivating habit change. These are, you know, the basics of habit change. So writing down your intention, setting a goal, setting a habit change goal is important. Listing the reasons why you want to make that change, identifying possible obstacles and challenges that might be called a pre-mortem, thinking of things that could go wrong, and then coming up with solutions. Drafting a plan and including solutions to possible obstacles and challenges will help set you up for success. Seeking accountability by having a partner or a friend. Following through with your plan. So oftentimes we like to actually make a plan, but we don't often like to follow through with that plan. And so tracking and evaluating your progress is hugely important. And then maintaining your motivation and your discipline to actually show up well for yourself every day is going to be uh, the most crucial step in this process. So setting your intention, you know, things like I will be the best version of myself by my next birthday, you know, how are you going to measure that? That's going to be hard. So you want to think about your smart goals. You know, is it going to be something that is, you know, sustainable, that's measurable, that's achievable, that has a realistic timeline. And that is something that you can actually, you know, track that is timely. That's going to help you set your intention. So it may be that, you know, the best version of yourself by your birthday would look different for everyone, but you could, you know, say, I want to be able to participate or run in a 5k by my next birthday. And that's going to be really measurable for you. So Wayne Dyer says our intention creates our reality. And that's what you need to really think about what intention you have. So one example I give is that we often set these arbitrary goals of, you know, I want to read a hundred books this year. And, you know, why is it that you want to read a hundred books? Is it because you want to read a hundred books or is it because you want to become a reader? And so if you read zero books last year and you decided, okay, in 2022, I want to read a hundred books because I want to be an accomplished reader, then you have to think about if you only read 50 books this year at the end of the year with traditional goal setting, you would say, oh, well, I wasn't successful. I didn't meet my goal, but really you've read 50 more books than you read the year before in our example. And so the goal was really not to meet the arbitrary, you know, 100 mark for the book goal. It was for you to become a reader. And if you read one more, two more, three more, 50 more books than you read the year before, then you really did accomplish the intention of your goal because you did become a reader. And so that's really important to think about as you move forward with habit change and goal setting. So with goal setting, you want to think about what emotion you want to feel, what feeling you want to feel when you achieve the goals that you have. You want to think about, you know, long-term, short-term goals, and then what you need to do on a daily basis to meet those goals. So what is it that you want to achieve this year? How do you want to feel when you achieve it? What do you want to achieve on a monthly or weekly basis to meet short-term goals? And then what do you need to do every day? to start working toward those short-term and long-term goals. Breaking it down in that way will really help you move the needle forward with your progress on your goals. So mapping out your goals, getting really clear on what it is you want to accomplish, why you want to accomplish it, and then scheduling it in your daily, weekly, and monthly routines and tasks will help you 
reach that achievement at the end of the year. If it isn't scheduled, it usually won't happen. And so you want to make sure that everything has a date and time assigned to complete a task. I always say the reason you make it to the dentist appointment is because it's on a specific day and a specific time. So if you have a goal, you have something that you want to accomplish, you need to make sure that you assign it a specific day and time and put it in your calendar as if it is a meeting or an appointment with yourself. And then track your goals at least on a weekly basis. You know, have you missed a mini goal or a step that would help you get to the next level of success? That's okay. Schedule it in so that you have it in your calendar. And, you know, I always say rinse and repeat as often as needed. So keep coming back to these principles as much as you need to as you're mapping out your goals. You want to make your habits easy. So if you want to exercise in the morning, laying out your workout clothes the night before, getting everything that you're going to need in the morning to, ready to go, having a water bottle, et cetera, that's going to make this habit easy, right? If you want to read, then put a book on your pillow the night before, um, you know, or the morning of when you're getting ready for the day, make sure your book is on your pillow so that you can read at night. Uh, if you want to send more thank you notes, have thank you notes on hand, you know, put them in your car, have them at home, have them at your desk at work. So those are things that you want to think about doing to set yourself up for success. If you want to drink more water, make sure that you have a water bottle with you and that you can refill it often. So we often default to the goals, those keystone or foundational habits that we've set a long time ago, and we do it based on how easy it is. So if we can make it easy, we're more likely to do it. And that plays into this focus on systems over goals. So if we want to win a championship, then it's not about, you know, that one game, did we, you know, win the championship game, but it's how we recruit our players. It's how we run our practices. It's how we manage the day-to-day -day operations, right? Um, it's the same thing with being an entrepreneur or being a musician. It's the little things that we do every day, those routines and those rhythms of everyday life, focusing on those goals day by day. It's not the one-time championship game. It's not the, you know, multi-million dollar contract or the one, you know, musical recital, but it's the practice and the rehearsal and the things that go into those uh, momentous occasions that really set you up for success. And those are systems over the one-time goals. So I teach a class very similar to this for Wellbema at UA, and this is an handout that we often provide our faculty and staff who attend the workshops. So it's something about, you know, really writing down and making visual what you want to accomplish that can be so powerful. So we always encourage people to write down their goal, who their accountability partner is going to be, a positive affirmation around that goal, steps that they need to accomplish. So, you know, writing down 10 things that could help move that needle forward and then picking the four most important and how they're going to know if they were measuring those or make those, you know, achievable, how it's going to be um, tracked in terms of, you know, success and evaluation. And then creating a map of actually, you know, what the goal is and when we're starting, having a deadline. And then, you know, really thinking about what goals you want to move forward with. So coach Nick Saban says, focusing on the process of what it takes to be successful. It's really the ticket. And so this is going to be an example of how you can write down your goal. So if it were to lose 10% of your body weight by May 1st, then writing down your partner and in who you're going to check in with regularly, uh, you know, you could say something like I nourish my body and I give it rest. And then you can just kind of brain drain all of the things that you think would be helpful to do if you were going to try to lose 10% of your body weight. And so it might be stepping on the scale, starting to walk, joining a gym, you know, all of the things that we know to do to be successful and then picking four and I always say, make it fun and cheap and free. You know, the, we always say in nursing to do the least invasive thing first, but it's the same thing with your goals. You don't want to, you know, go to number four here and put it as one of your top four as I'm going to join a fancy gym when you don't even have walking shoes or you haven't actually stepped on the scale 
that's not the first place to start, but that's often what we do is we'll just join the gym or we'll buy the nutrition plan when we haven't done the basics first. And so we write down our deadline and then we remember to focus on the process like coach Saban says. So always start today and do the thing that's going to help you get a baseline of where you are. So stepping on the scale would be the first thing you needed to do. Then make a goal for two weeks, a month, two months, three months, because you're really going to need to have at least, um, you know, two to three months of work to see some progress. And so deciding on a meal plan, beginning a wall, maybe joining a gym in a couple of months, and then stepping back on that scale to see where you've made it. And then how you track, maybe you mark it on your tracker or you meal plan and prep. Those are the kinds of things that will help you be accountable to the goals that you have. And it'll help you know if you're actually being successful. So preparing for success, what I'd really like to say here is treat these things, um, you know, as, you know, many to do's, uh, maybe even a menu of what you can choose uh, that really resonates with you to help support your goals. So always honor your wisdom, try to remove those triggers that you might have that are keeping you in that habit loop that may not be as helpful to you. Choose to replace unhealthy habits when you can. Focus on and visualize changing, um, you know, what are you going to look like, feel like, be like when you meet that goal. Monitor your negative self-talk. It's so important that we're our own best friends and our own cheerleaders. Start small and take those baby steps. We always say small progress is still progress. Anticipate setbacks. Know that change takes time and really reward yourself along the way. And practice self-care and mindfulness. You know, it's all about really honoring who you are and where you are in your life be persistent. We know that it takes about 66 days to form a habit. We used to say that it took 21 days, but really we know that 21 days is just the beginning of habit formation. So really be persistent and see these goals through. I say two to three months would be a good starting point for you if you're going to start to make healthy changes. And then these are some habit stacking routines, 13 ways to really build upon um, a good habit stack. And so this is here for you for your review, um, but it just starts with just a few minutes a day of making some good changes. How to break a bad habit. You want to make it invisible. You want to make it unattractive. You want to make it difficult. You want to make it not be satisfying. So those are important things to think about as you start to add in good habits. You may want to start replacing the not so great habits or the quote unquote bad habits with, with better habits, with healthier habits. So here's a habit tracker that's free for you online. If you do a quick search at paper trail design, you can find this free tracker and it's important to be able to list. If you want to take supplements or you want to take a walk in the morning, then you add those habits here and then you can track them across the days of the month. I find that's really helpful. If you're a visual person posting this where you can see it every day can be really inspiring. There's also this daily routine. So your current habit and your stacked habit, you can write out, I'm going to brush my teeth and then I'm going to give myself a compliment. If you follow uh, Mel Robbins, she goes and does her morning routine and then she gives herself a high five in the mirror every morning just to have a really good, you know, positive start to her day. So this is really kind of similar to that one. Uh, here's a habit contract where you can write, what is your goal? What's the consequence if you don't complete your habit? Who's going to be that habit partner or accountability partner? You can sign it. Your partner can sign it. And then you can really start to map out the intentions that we worked through earlier in the presentation, because what does your goal mean to you? You've really got to get to the why behind the why, because, you know, for every goal that you set, you really need to understand the deeper meaning behind it. It's not about the 100 books or the 10% weight loss. Maybe it means that you have more energy. Maybe it means that you've created a, you know, a nice hobby for yourself in reading. Those are things that are really sustainable and meaningful um, versus just having arbitrary goals because you want to fit into a smaller pair of pants or, uh, you know, you want to be able to post that you've read 100 books this year. And just remember that finding balance looks different for everyone. Uh, for all of us, we're going to find balance in different ways. And that is perfectly okay. We want that because we all are unique and individual. And we all have our own challenges, our own, uh, you know, motivations and core values. So respecting that within each of us is important. And we all go through different seasons of life as well. So creating awareness around any negative beliefs and, you know, 
kind of, you know, challenges that you may have pursuing a positive mindset, developing a good mental health and wellness plan, the physical health and wellness plan is important to you. And then really practicing self-care and stress management will be beneficial. Mindfulness and meditation, letting your brain rest, being able to meditate, journaling, breathing techniques, taking breaks from social media and, and tech and devices and being present in the moment. I always tell people to be present where their feet are. You know, your feet aren't in tomorrow and your feet aren't in yesterday. Your feet are really right here, right now, listening to this presentation. So try to be present here. And then there's some practical tools that I'll go through quickly. If you like this PowerPoint presentation, you're very welcome to email me and I'm happy to send you a copy, but just some things, uh, the high performance planner by Brendan Bouchard, the cultivate what matters goal setting plan, the start today journal by Rachel Hollis. These are all great tools, but a notebook or an app on your phone works perfectly fine for setting goals. Some other useful resources are going to be the 54321 technique, grounding here, just getting out in nature, headspace and motivation are a couple of apps that I really enjoy for uh, just meditations and motivational quotes. Yoga with Adrienne, stress relief is really important as we start to try to make changes. And then a Spotify playlist called Totally Stress Free, I find is really helpful that you listen to the music that you enjoy. And then remember that successful people are simply those with successful habits. And, you know, it's really about committing to just being that 1% better every day and not striving for perfection. So I thank you for your time and attention today. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And if you're wanting to reach out, please do so at abby.horton at ua.edu for more information. And I'd also invite you to look at wellness.ua.edu. On that web page, we have archived webinars and you can go back and see other presentations that I've done, other goal setting presentations like this. And we would love for you to have access to those resources and share those with your network. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.